Mo Eisen was just nine years old when she saw a poker card embellished with pornographic images. She says those images were instantly burned into her memory and ultimately led her to a decades-long porn addiction. For years, Mo excelled as an athlete and was in the media spotlight with her secret addiction well hidden. Take a look. Mo Isom has packed a lot of living into 28 years. As an All-American goalkeeper at Louisiana State University, she holds the all-time school record in women's soccer with 35 victories and 25 shutouts. ESPN honored her for top 10 plays of the week after she kicked a 90-yard goal. Mo was also the first female in the country to try out for and train with an SEC Division I men's football team, the Tigers of LSU. While her athletic accomplishments brought a lot of media attention, her life was challenged with adversity and unexpected tragedy. The moment the three police officers walked into the room my mom, my sister and I were in and told us that they had found my dad's remains, the world froze. After her father's death, Mo was in an automobile accident, which brought her face to face with a God who loved her. And that started a new chapter in her life. In 2013, she became a New York Times bestselling author with her book, Wreck My Life, Journeying from Broken to Bold. Before writing her second book, Sex, Jesus, and the Conversations the Church Forgot, Mo married Jeremiah. They have two daughters, Auden and Asher. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Mo Isom. It's great to have you here. It's so great to be here. Thank you for having me. Mo, God has made you powerful, your voice powerful, not just your performance, but your willingness to be brave about things that a lot of people hide because they feel diminished by them. Talk a little bit, if you will. You've been very successful in your life in so many areas. And when it comes to sexual addictions or sexual issues of any kind, there's a lot of shame attached to that. What made you decide to go public with this? Um, for that very reason, I think that the enemy uses sexual sin to shame us into silence. And yet, if you look around our world, around our culture right now, it is one of the greatest issues we are wrestling with. And so my, my confusion comes in, then why are we silent? Yeah. Why, if scripture says, boast in your weaknesses so you can point to the glory of the cross, why are we not speaking about these struggles and about the freedom that can come in Jesus' name from these things? Which actually sets others free. Exactly. Go back to that nine-year-old time with the, the poker card. Mm -hmm. Tell us what happened. I was climbing into my dad's truck and opened the door and he had a lot stuffed behind the seats and some things fell out. And I picked up one of the, the pieces of paper and it was a poker card, but it had pornographic image on the back. And it was my first time to see these graphic things. And even being young and not fully understanding, it still seared something in my heart. Mm -hmm. And you would think that we would run from that and you know not want to see it again, but actually quite the opposite happens usually. So it triggered this curiosity in me and kind of this longing to see more, to understand these feelings. And it just led me into the darkness of navigating through um, struggles with wanting to set these things before my eyes. Well, and the poker card is in your daddy's car. How did yeah. this impact your relationship with your dad over the years? Um, really tremendously, yeah. because I then began to see, you know, I'd come into the office where he was on the computer and he'd turn it off quickly. And we'd come across things at night when I'd come down for a snack and see things that were keeping my father out of the arms of my mommy. Yeah. And that's hard on a young heart. And I became resentful and confused and then even more shame filled because it was things that intrigued me. Mm -hmm. And I saw how it was affecting my parents' marriage and my father's heart, yet we were all silent about it. And I was silently struggling with the very same urges and temptations. And so it, it's just brokenness that breeds brokenness and sin that breeds sin. And you know, it's, it's so crazy because I see this in, in kids also when they're very unhappy that their parents say smoke cigarettes mm -hmm. and they throw them out and they cry and then, then they grow up and they smoke. Right. And so there is a hook in all of this that gets in us. How did this impact your relationships as you grew up, became a young woman and moved into adulthood? You know, porn really began to shape my perspective of strength and power and beauty and 
um, what people desire from appeal, women, yeah. appeal. Mm -hmm. And that kind of escorted me, that desensitized view on things, escorted me into acting things out in the same way, into promiscuity, into seeking others to give me worth and value and affirmation. And when we don't know Christ and we don't know whose yeah. we are and that inherent worth and value that we carry and that he died for to redeem, um, we can we can go down a long and winding trail of struggling. And then, Mo, even after you knew Christ, because it had its hook in you, you still struggled so much with it, which only demeans your your self value in your own head and heart for a right. long time. Right. Yeah. Sexual sin is just has a strong stranglehold on us oftentimes and in many ways and after coming to know Christ and after having him free me of this you know struggle with pornography and knowing the power of redemption there still at times when temptation came I chose to choose for myself and, and stumbled yet again but the conviction that comes with that when we know the beauty of freedom yet we still walk back into bondage it's it's heavy, and um, God had to do a great work in my heart of breaking chains and soul ties and misunderstandings and time. confusion. It took time, yeah. and it took a lot of forgiveness, and it took a lot of extending myself to ask forgiveness from others, and it took wrestling with and reckoning with these sexual struggles yeah. to truly find freedom, because God invites us to participate in yeah. the healing. He invites us to wrestle through these things. I, I want to go back, if I can, to your childhood, just in the sense that your mom talked about sex as you were growing up. You know, a lot of parents think that's enough. If they just bring up the issues, if they just say you shouldn't do it, bada bum, you know, you're right. done. What didn't she say that she could have that would have made a difference? You know, I, I, I don't fault my mom. She was always very open about these types of conversations, but I was quick to grab onto something. We talked about virginity. And so I grabbed onto virginity and waved it as this proud banner of understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think oftentimes the church will talk a lot about the do's and don'ts, the rights and wrongs and virginity, but we don't carry the conversation further into what God deeply cares about, which is purity, mm -hmm. purity of heart purity in what we set before our eyes and our thoughts and our actions because we are pure vessels that God desires to use. And so when the conversation stops at virginity, mm -hmm. our question becomes, okay, then how far is too far? Yeah. Then what still qualifies me as a virgin? It becomes a works-based answer to a life surrender question. Yeah. God speaks of purity in his word, that he desires purity for our lives. And it also doesn't address what God's purpose and intention for the marriage bed is, because right. there's so much that's skewed in our, our culture today. And you talk in your book about uh, becoming one, about that holy part of, of sex yeah. that was God's plan. Yes, sex is God's invention. It is a gift given to us by God. And he, he, he instructs us in certain and particular ways around it because he knows what is best for us. Sex is an act of worship. It is a weapon against the enemy in marriage. It is a unifying weapon that is so beautiful. But when we are, you know, exercising it outside of God's design mm -hmm. and then struggling with the pain and the bondage that that inflicts, we can often carry that sometimes into marriage. And my sister-in-law told me the greatest quote one time, she said, Prior to marriage, the enemy will do everything he can to drive you together. And after marriage, the enemy will do everything he can to drive you apart. Boy, that's the truth. God's gifts are good and they are holy and they are with great purpose. And I think when we can come to, to wrap our hearts and our hands around God's beautiful design, it can save our marriages. It can serve our marriages. It can become something that we operate in um, as husband and wife in great beauty within marriage. And as parents. Boy, yes. I just want to say whether you have struggled with some form of sex addiction or wounding in that area of your life, maybe you're a parent and you're raising kids and you think, how do I protect my kids from what's skewed in the culture today? Mo's book is called Sex, Jesus and the Conversations the Church Forgot. And it's available wherever books are sold. Highly recommended. By the way, she's also our featured speaker at our noon chapel today. We'll be streaming that service live. So again, if you want to join us, go to cbn.com at noon Eastern time. And we'd love to have you be there with us. Thanks, Mo. Great Thank to have you. you here.